the word that we knew already. So when I see the word, I read it as in another Buddhist society. And finally, one day I met this sister, and she corrected me, especially, I purposely corrected me, it is not Kinnara, it is Kinnara. So what, however, it's a beautiful name, a beautiful sound. I heard there's the name of the neighborhood, but your name of the Buddhist society is Metta Buddhist society in Kinnara. So I'm happy to finally be here uh, to be with you to talk about rebirth. So today, uh, the usual uh, the topic that was already uh, decided was the researches on rebirth in the West. So today, I would like to talk about the interest uh, on the studies or researches about rebirth in the Western countries, and then to talk about what is the real Buddhist ex explanation on the rebirth. However, I was thinking uh, to introduce the book called uh, Do You Believe in Rebirth? But when I checked, the, checked your bookshelves, I saw that there are enough copies. So inside here, you may be able to see uh, one of the uh, profounding researches that have been carried in Western countries by psychology professors. So therefore, I will not spend much time on uh, discussing about what are the researches that have been done about rebirth, but I will just introduce few and later you may read the book and then you will be, you'll be familiar with the thing. I may focus more on the Buddhist explanation about rebirth. Okay. Uh, I remember one story uh, that I heard when I was a small monk uh, but still I am yet to find the uh, source of this story but still I, I couldn't find uh, but somehow it, this is story quite interesting uh, as an introductory story uh, when you talk about river one day Buddha was giving a sermon uh, uh, to people, group of people and on this old group of people and there, were, and there was one person who was listening to the talk and while uh, always uh, while touching the ground touching the means is not only touching but trying try to scratch the ground always try to scratch the ground and he, uh, so he was listening to the talk someone by the Buddha always touching the, uh, the ground there was one more person also listening to the Buddha at the same time but while he was listening, he was trying to, there was a tree nearby where he was sat because Buddha was giving some open space and he was always breaking the leaves of the tree. This is a story, okay, but I am yet to find the source, but I found it still good, maybe you know, uh, among, among the Buddhist community. Then Buddha says that, okay, and I can see the different nature of these two persons. One who is scratching the ground always, you know, looking for the ground, always try to scratch the ground as a natural tendency in him. Could be a peak in his previous life. One who is, is uh, breaking the leaves, touching the leaves of the branch, could be a monkey in his previous life. So be careful when you listen to the Dhamma <laughs> <laughs> So he can tell you, you know, who are you. But this is story, I am yet to find the real source, but I couldn't yet find. I have read many of the suttas, but I still I couldn't come across with the actual source. But there's an implication to, to, to start about the rebirth. We have certain tendencies in our personal life. We don't know actually where it came from. We have certain likes and dislikes. And even among the same, even among the children in the same family, and as parents, we may experience how diverse are they regarding their choices, their likes and dislikes, and their tendencies, their habits. So although this story looks like funny, it shows that we bring certain habits, certain tendencies, likes and dislikes to this life. And each individual is unique. And 
So Buddhism can explain the uniqueness of each individual with reference to the teaching of the rebirth. Some say that they are inheritance, but what, what, what we mean by inheritance? In modern psychology, uh, they have discovered two factors that determine the development of the personality of, of a child. One factor is the environment. The environment that he is exposed to. What type of environment that you know he always uh, it can be education, family, school and society, media, those are the environment. And they also recognize one factor. They call it inherence or uh, that the individual himself has inheritance. But psychology has not uh, discovered yet what made this particular factor inheritance decided. And although we are exposed to the same environment, our upbringing would be still different. And that inheritance, where yeah, it comes from, and what decides that particular inner nature of that person, which responds to the environment in a particular way. And psychology haven't discovered yet what, what decides this particular inheritance. But when you come to Buddhist description, we can describe this in, in, uh, inheritance, in, uh, inherent nature or inherent qualities of a person by referring to his previous lives. And they're not actually inheritance in a, in a sense. They also experience that they have brought from the past life. So the Buddhism can explain certain things with the help of, like, certain things very clearly with the help of the doctrine of river. And uh, when, when you, uh, usual problem with the rebirth in Buddhist doctrine or rebirth is that when we know the other doctrines of the or other basic doctrine, doctrines of Buddhism, it's quite easy for us to see for ourselves in this personal life about four noble truths. And if you just pay enough attention to your own life or one just particular experience in your life, you may be able to see the some sense of suffering, and you may be able to see what causes the suffering and what conditions the suffering, and and maybe, maybe a, a moment or, or some uh, short duration that you can be free from all uh, defilements. You can feel this peace and happiness and calm.